guys, I just wanted to come on here and film a video for you guys today about um, kind of walking you step by step through my routine and starting Differin, how I apply Differin, um, how I incorporate it with my other skincare favorites along the way. Um, it's sort of a recap of my journey through using Differin throughout the month of January when I first started it. Um, and so if you're new here, welcome. I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist. I post day in the life of a dermatologist vlogs that are, um, you know, sort of fun. Uh, and I share with you all uh, skincare advice and skincare knowledge uh, in an effort to improve the accuracy of information out there on the internet about uh, skincare. And I wanted to film my routine in, in sort of a concise way like this um, in case you're, in case in case you have been advised to use uh, Differin, which is now available over the counter, and you're kind of confused about maybe how to start it or how much to use or what you can mix it with. So I'm going to take you step by step through how I used it in today's video. So some general just tips about starting Differin. You only need a very tiny amount of the ingredient um, on your face. Um, and for this ingredient to be effective, uh, for acne, you only need to use it a few nights a week in the beginning especially um, while you get used to it. So I'll show you how I started using it. So the next set of clips I'll show you exactly how I applied Differin in the evening every other night for the first approximately two to three weeks of starting it. Okay, so step number one, you want to wash your face with a gentle cleanser to remove makeup, dirt, and oil. This is a critical step. If you're going to bed with your makeup on, mm -mm 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 -mm, okay? So in the evening, I wash my face to remove my makeup and sunscreen using Ultra Gentle Daily Cleanser by Neutrogena and the foaming formula. And so I'll show you how I do it just here. So wet, make sure your face is wet with lukewarm water, not scalding hot, as this will overly dry out the surface of your skin. To your wet face, this is about all of the face wash that you need. Just in gentle circles, making sure to remove your mascara and eyeshadow, okay? Then you want to rinse off completely in lukewarm water. Very important when you're washing your face to resist the urge to scrub to exfoliate or to use any harsh soaps. Just use a mild, gentle cleanser. I recommend this one because this is what I use and tolerate well, but there are a variety of others that I'll link down below that you can explore to find out which one works best for you, okay? Since the skin has just been washed to remove dirt, oil, and makeup, what you're at risk for now is something called transepidermal water loss, which you don't want uh, going on when you put on your Adapalene 0.1% brand name different. So to the wet face, see how my face is wet? You want to come in with a moisturizer. I use this oil-free moisturizer for sensitive skin by Neutrogena and I apply it to wet skin. The reason I do this, is it seals in the water into my skin and prevents it from evaporating. You don't want to put the different onto skin that is dry, parched, or irritated. Now you want to allow your face to dry completely. And while, while the skin on the face is drying completely, the next step that I do, that is particularly helpful when starting a retinoid, like different, is to come in with an ointment. You can use plain Vaseline, I've also used Aquaphor in the past. Currently I'm using the CeraVe healing ointment that contains ceramides. The, the premise of this step is to apply an ointment, something that is thick and greasy like this, around the corners of your mouth, around the corners of your nose, and around the corners of your eyes. I refer to this as greasing the orifices. The purpose of this step is these are areas that where the skin is thin and retinoids should not go, okay? So by doing this, we create a nice little seal that keeps any retinoid from accidentally going there. And so my skin is hydrated and importantly dry and most receptive to drinking up the different or adapting 0.1%. You only need a very, very thin film of this onto your face for it to work, okay? And the more you put on, you're essentially just wasting it, okay? So you essentially need what's called a pea-sized amount that admittedly is a completely vague concept, right? And this is what we mean by a pea-sized amount, okay? Do you see that here? That's, that's how much you want to apply. I dot, 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 dot it on my face 
Uh, don't dot it around your eyes. Keep it, and now you just gently massage it in into a thin layer, okay? That is all you need. The skin is moisturized, dry, and hydrated. Very important to put this on dry, moisturized skin. You don't want to apply it onto wet skin. You don't want to apply it around the eyes. Do not apply it to the neck, okay? These aren't areas where this should go. Adapalene 0.1% will effectively get into the oil bearing surfaces of your skin within five minutes of application. Okay, so you're good to go. That's it. I recommend that if this is your first time using Differin um, or Adapalene, that this is all you do, okay? That you don't combine this with anything else, that you avoid a ton of cleansers and you know things over the counter um, simultaneously. Because what is occurring is, in the beginning, the Adapalene is starting to peel some of your skin and start working at those acne spots. And if you have a whole lot of other distractors on the face, it's only going to create more irritation, more inflammation. It's only going to further uh, inflame the skin and, and make this an uh, insufferable process for you. So keep it as simple as possible. To summarize, you want to wash the face with a gentle cleanser to remove dirt, oil, and makeup. Then apply a moisturizer to a wet face. Allow your face to dry so the skin is hydrated and dry and receptive to receiving the active ingredient in Differin, which is Adapalene. While you're waiting for it to dry, don't forget to grease the orifices as uh, this is where uh, you could potentially get a lot of extra irritation if you get Differin in these areas. Next, you want to apply a, pea, a tiny pea-sized amount of the uh, different to your face, um, targeting kind of areas in the jaw, the sides of the face, the forehead, and the nose, but making sure to avoid your sunglass area, okay? So the next series of clips will show you the, my skincare routine for the morning after applying different, as I think it's also important. So the following morning after using your different or Adapalene, it's fine to go ahead and wash your face with a salicylic acid face wash. Um, you never want to mix salicylic acid and Differin together and put them on at the same time. However, it's fine to use salicylic acid the final morning. I use the Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Wash, which is 2% salicylic acid, which is what you'll find in most acne products over the counter. So again, I just wash my face with lukewarm water. You really only need about that much of the wash. Let's see, Adapalene is starting to um, work. It, it does cause quite a bit of ir irritation and peeling. Um, and your acne may worsen in the first approximately three weeks, three to four weeks, as all of the acne is coming to the surface. So be very gentle with scrubbing. Avoid harshly scrubbing the face as this will worsen acne. Now, as an added step to help combat some of the dryness and irritation of healing, I'm going to come on with um, a hyaluronic acid with the Neutrogena Hydro Boost, which is a hyaluronic acid gel cream. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant that um, won't really effectively penetrate the skin, but binds up the water molecules that are on my face and helps them stay on my skin and go back into my skin where they belong rather than evaporating. This helps prevent transepidermal water loss. That's why you want to put this on wet skin. To, seal, to help glom on those water molecules and keep them on your skin. Once the face, once you put on the hyaluronic acid and it's somewhat dry, um, you want to come in with um, a broad spectrum SPF 30 to 50 zinc titanium dioxide based sunscreen. Um, this is incredibly critical while using Differin, a parentheses Adapalene, or any other uh, retinoid like tre tretinoin or tazeratine, as these medications thin the top layer of the skin and increase the, uh, increase the amount of, of light exposure that you're going to get. And I prefer zinc or titanium, di and zinc or titanium dioxide based sunscreens are best because these physically block the sun. They tend to be well tolerated, they tend to not sting, um, and they're effective immediately. I like this brand, I like this one by CeraVe, it's SPF 50, um, I'll link it down below. It has uh, zinc in it and titanium 
nitrogen dioxide, is lightweight, oil-free. This will not break you out. Contrary to what you may think, this will not break you out, okay? Excessive sun exposure will worsen acne, but this will not break, this particular sunscreen especially will not break you out. Um, and it also has ceramides in it. And ceramides are a component of the natural skin barrier that are important for, for keeping the skin hydrated and healthy. So I like this. You put this not only all over your face, but on your neck and your ears. This is so important because when acne is either inflamed, because acne can heal with a dark mark when exposed to the sun, and being on a retinoid thins the top layer of the skin, allows more sun to come in, and increases the chances that the acne that you have uh, will, will heal with a dark stain, which you don't want. Then I come in with a second zinc titanium dioxide based tinted sunscreen. The reason I come in with a second one is uh, for makeup and a little bit of added protection. I like using this Elta MD um, broad spectrum tinted sunscreen, which I'll link down below. Um, and some people, many people ask me if this sunscreen can be used by itself. I don't use it alone. I always use a base layer. The reason being, I don't like to waste tinted sunscreen. I don't like putting tinted sunscreen on my ears and neck and all of these other places. I'm, I mostly use this um, for added sunscreen and kind of like a concealer under my eyes. And you're good to go. When starting Differin or any other retinoid like tazeratine or tretinoin, I recommend minimalist makeup if at all possible because makeup has a variety of dyes and other ingredients that can be irritating to the skin. The skin is already going to become inflamed with the uh, retinoid and acne is inflammatory and is trying to heal and the more stuff that you put on your face, it becomes more of a, a battleground. So I recommend just sunscreen, tinted sunscreen as a makeup if you want and you know, minimal eye makeup. While you're using this ingredient, and, and really in general, a very, very important step in your skincare routine uh, is to apply a broad spectrum sunscreen. It's really important while you're on something like Differin for acne, or really any acne treatment, because most acne treatments thin the top layer of the skin and make it more susceptible to sun getting in, uh, which can lead to darkness and discoloration, as well as kind of uh, making it difficult for the acne to heal. All right, so in the beginning, when you're first starting Differin, you can expect to experience um, a, few a few weeks of what's called the Differin purge in which your acne initially gets a little worse. You also will have quite a bit of irritation. That's why I say go slow. And I, that's why I, I say go slow, and that's why I started using this cream every other night rather than nightly. A, because it's been shown to be effective when used that way, and B, I didn't want my skin to get overly irritated and dry. So. That's, that's a good way to start this, is to go every other night and go slow. That dryness, irritation, and peeling will improve with time, and eventually your acne, you will start to see an improvement in your acne after a few months of consistent use. Sometimes you can begin to see improvements, though, within a f the first few weeks of using this ingredient. So I encourage you to stick with it and keep the routine simple. Once things were going well for me and I didn't really have any irritation or peeling, um, approximately two and a half weeks, at approximately the three week juncture, I changed things up a little bit and brought back in another skincare ingredient into the lineup at night and I'll show you how I did that here. So adapalene, 0.1%, can be combined with, can be combined with benzoyl peroxide. Um, salicylic acid cannot be combined with Differin, okay? So bear that in mind. Look at the active ingredient of your, your other um, medication. Okay. Step number one, wash the face, okay? Step number two, to a wet face, apply your moisturizer. Step number three, grease the orifices to protect them from any of the retinoid going in. Allow the skin to just sit there and dry, air dry a moment, okay? No scrubbing, no buffing, no sauna blading or whatever, none of that, okay? This is the P that you need. Dot, 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 dot him on the face and rub him in. Just a thin film, that's all you need. Can you appreciate that, guys? Thin film. And 
So next, I'm gonna come in with benzoyl peroxide 2.5% in this, um, the brand is Rapid, Neutrogena Rapid Clear. Just know the active ingredient is benzoyl peroxide. 2.5% benzoyl peroxide is as effective at clearing lesions of acne as higher percent strengths, for example, 10% but with less irritation, okay? So there's no need to necessarily go higher with this. And again, just a P, dot, 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 same areas. So that's how I combine differin and benzoyl peroxide. I call this the epiduo dupe because epiduo is essentially adapalene 0.1% and benzoyl peroxide 2.5% combined in a cream. Okay, but now you can get this over the counter and you always could get benzoyl peroxide over the counter. So you got an epiduo dupe. So I brought in another skincare ingredient that I've been using previously, um, and that's benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide can in fact be combined with adapalene. It's perfectly safe to do so. Um, the reason I waited to incorporate it is to get my skin to a point where the irritation was, was good because benzoyl peroxide also causes quite a bit of skin irritation, and the two together uh, for a noob for a newbie, the two together would be really irritating. So I started with just the Differin, just the Adapalene, and then I added in the uh, Benzoyl Peroxide. And I enjoy using the Benzoyl Peroxide 2.5% uh, gel that is found in the Neutrogena Levon Mask. I'll link it down below, but just know the active ingredient is Benzoyl Peroxide, and you can go as low as 2.5%. That percentage strength is just as effective at clearing lesions of acne as higher percentage strengths, but with a decreased chance of uh, causing causing irritation to you. So I will point out, however, that salicylic acid should not be combined with Differin. Um, salicylic acid is fine to use uh, the morning after you applied uh, Differin or um, on off nights when you're not using the Differin, but it's not, um, it should not be applied at the same time as the Differin as it can potentially inactivate it. All right, guys, so I hope my step-by-step uh, -step, uh, so I hope this video uh, walking you through how I applied Differin and kind of my, my journey into starting Differin was helpful to you all. Um, I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, a comment below, and, subs and subscribe for uh, Day in the Life of a Dermatologist vlogs and uh, more skincare related content. Um, and I encourage you to comment below on um, any more questions that you have.